So now we will uh, move to the presentation uh, done by one developing country and then one region. So the one developing country will be the Czech Republic, and I will ask uh, Pavel Vicenik uh, to uh, make you a uh, presentation and to uh, show you uh, then a, a video. Pavel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a really great honor and privilege for me to be here today and to present you Czech Turf. Uh, we have 10 minutes for our presentation and the movie part or video part of it lasts 13 minutes, so I got only minus, minus three minutes for my introduction. It's very short time, so I'll be as brief as possible. Well, the history of uh, Czech Turf is nearly 200 years old. Uh, in the year 1839, first racing ho authority was created in Prague, capital city of what Czech Republic is now and what was Czech Kingdom in those years. First annual racing report was issued in that year by this authority and a certain game boy was appointed in it as the best horse of that year. It was five-year-old Tarabret of Irish descent. He was by Sir Hercules out of Rigi by Teddy the Grinder. This horse was owned by the young, young Duke Octavian Kinski, the man who had his lion share in creation of Loka Pardubicka steeplechase 35 years later. Loka Pardubicka itself was run in the year 1874 for the first time and its 122nd edition will be run on this Saturday in Pardubice town again. Throughout the 19th century, until the start of World War I, we had regular race meetings on various race courses located mainly on outskirts of Prague. At the end, uh, after the end of World War I and uh, after the collapse of Austro-Hungarian Empire, of which we were a part in those years, we created with Slovaks Czechoslovakia. And in the year 1919, Czechoslovakian uh, Jackie Club was created with the main task to uh, restore our turf after the disasters of that war. Throughout the 20th century, we suffered, as the rest of Europe, many blows. The last one came in the year 1948, when a communistic coup took place in our country. The turf itself was seen by communists as a um, useless, useless hobby for rich people. So the jockey club was dissolved, private ownership of resources was prohibited, private owned horses, race horses were nationalized or better said stolen by the state. Uh, imports from behind so-called Iron Curtain were almost stopped with the rare exceptions of uh, imports of uh, breeding material and uh, Tarabred breeding was reduced and uh, for example uh, horse race betting was limited only on on course betting. This all lasted nearly two decades, but at the end of the 60s, the communists gradually found out that they had much lesser problems to keep young people in the countryside by agriculture, so they decided to support uh, horse racing again as a way of country life, country life activity. Uh, private ownership of resources was still not allowed, but uh, socialistic state-controlled organizations and companies were encouraged to have their, their own uh, racing stables in greater scale than before. As a result, the numbers of racehorses in the 70s and 80s were five times higher than those in the 50s and 60s. 
whole new generation of young people found uh, its way to horse racing in those years. And it were mostly these people from this generation who started uh, work on restoration and redeveloping of, of our turf in early 90s, when so-called, after so-called Velvet Revolution took place in our country in the year 1989. Well, and that's what we do, exactly what we do right now, last 20 years until today. We work hard to raise the standards of our races. Uh, some of you can see the results when our horses come to your countries to take part in your races. Some of you see them when you come with your horses into our country to take part in our races. Well, and the rest of you will see them now in the video part of this presentation. Thank you for your attention and please enjoy the movie.